What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and in today's video we're gonna have a little bit of a discussion. Now keep in mind with these kind of discussion videos I like when you guys put your input down in the comment section because this way we can all grow together as a community. We can all see what everyone's perspective is. I'm gonna give you guys my opinion with this discussion but keep in mind my opinion isn't final right? This is just how I feel. This is how I'm just predicting and also a lot of these opinions are based off of me and a lot of my competitive Yu-Gi-Oh friends having a lot of conversation right? Now in today's video the discussion we're going to be having is are bestial monsters or i guess were bestial monsters a mistake now i know it might sound weird but a few days ago a good friend ggygo posted this on twitter and said hey maybe the bestial monsters need to get limited and i was thinking you know what me and my friends have talked about this for a while and i was actually just like I don't want to say too afraid, but I didn't go out of my way to post it because I thought people would just be like, yo, you're crazy. We need this to be tier limits. How are we supposed to be tier limits without, without the bestial monsters? And we. Okay, listen. Okay, listen. I understand. But keep in mind that when I think about cards, I'm thinking about the future of the game. You can't really just think about the current state because the current state doesn't reflect how these cards are going to affect decks in the future, right? So I'm going to get into that a little bit more in depth. But if you guys do enjoy these discussion videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one we upload five days a week here on the channel deck profiles combo videos dual replays discussions like this one here and there this one i think is something that we do need to talk about as a community and i really just want to get your opinions on this one right so if you guys enjoy these kind of videos make sure to like the video and subscribe it does help out a ton and the goal is to get to 8,000 subscribers by the end of the year and i know with you guys' help we can make that happen all right so i'm just going to say this now we're going to go in online to talk about and give you guys some more examples of this but i'm just going to talk to you guys a little bit here in this video we're going to be talking about the past the present and the future of the bestial monsters now i understand that just in general i'm going to say this now that the tier limit matchup is the tier zero deck of the format and that deck obviously needs to be checked in some way shape or form whether the ban list does it or in this case the bestial monsters were released to kind of combat against the tier limit matchup that deck does need to be checked i understand that all right there's no argument against that but in today's video again we're focusing on the bestial monsters specifically magnamu but i guess you could also argue Druid Swarm and sarnir but the bestial archetype as a whole and and how actually I think in the long term, they're going to be a mistake for this game. Those kind of cards are uh, really, I, I don't want to say like poorly made, but it's like a weird kind of power creep where it's very collateral okay i'm gonna get into it right now but again i'm gonna be spitting this video into the past the present and the future and let's start off by talking with the past all right so historically hand traps were exactly just that cards in the hand that you can activate on your opponent's turn so that now you have some form of interaction which is going to end up stopping them from creating a combo or creating a full board etc etc cards like ash blossom was one of the best hand traps for a very long time the new hand traps didn't necessarily take away from the old ones keep in mind there were cards like effect veiler and drool and lockbird which were printed in the 5Ds era. You had cards like DD Crow that was printed all the way back in the GX era. So these hand traps are super, super old, but we're seeing play for a very long time, even in the newer formats. Now, I know in this format right now, we're not seeing too many hand traps. I guess you can argue the Bestial Monsters are hand traps. We'll get into that in a second. But in general, a lot of these old hand traps haven't necessarily been power crept by new hand traps. Now, yes, the new hand traps like Ash, Ghost Spell, those cards are insane in their own right. But even a card like Skullmeister as well that I didn't even think of, which is kind of an older card card has been seeing play. So now I want to talk about why this past or the past history of hand traps kind of affects the future and this whole bestial thing, right? Keep in mind that these hand traps were exactly what I just said. You use them from the hand, they go to the graveyard, and that's really it. Outside of Phantasmi, which summons itself to the field, and that only works under very certain conditions as well, most hand traps never really hit the field, never really provided a body for you. Now the bestial monsters, on the other hand, are a little bit different. So let's talk about the present now, right? So that's a little history behind trend traps. I know it was kind of brief but it's really important to note what i just said what these hand traps are yes they're really good pieces that you can include in your deck but that's all they were they were a card that was used from the hand that went to the graveyard that to stop your opponent however it did neg one you a card right because you're going to lose that card from your hand go to the graveyard you're going to start with four cards when you draw your turn you're going to have five cards but it did take you a minus one to get to that right yes you can argue it's a one for one because you're stopping something your opponent does but it takes a card out of your hand now the bestial monsters now we're going to get into the present right the bestial monsters are insane 
insane. I'm going to be honest with you. I understand why they came out and I understand the reason they were made essentially was to combat the tier limit matchup. But the problem with the Bastille cards are the future of it, but also even in the present, it makes rogue decks pretty much unplayable. These cards have pretty much seen play in every single deck in the format. And we're going to go online so I can show you guys a little bit more about what I mean. But these cards have seen play in pretty much every single deck and it's made rogue decks impossible to play. I mean, the Dark World structure deck just came out and that deck's pretty much unplayable because because the bestial cards exist of course you can also argue dimensional fissure being at three and the ban list kind of affects it as well don't get me wrong it's not just solely the bestial cards but the bestial cards themselves just make you if you're playing like let's say dark world makes it really difficult to play that deck because all your cards are going to get banished if you're playing hero it's going to make it really difficult because all your cards are going to get banished i'm just saying hero because that's a deck i play but in just in general there's a lot of different light and dark based decks that lose and fold to the bestial monsters right so this is a thing that i want to talk about where it's like hey these cards were created to beat i guess the tier zero meta deck but the problem with them is that they're gonna hit pretty much any other deck and make them really difficult to play right there's a lot of decks in the game that pretty much lose when their cards in the graveyard are getting banished getting stopped by some sort of means and the thing is with the bestial monsters and this is the biggest thing of all right the thing with the bestial monsters is on top of them being a hand trap and disruption they're basically all like dd crows right they're all dd crow cards but they put a body on the board. So remember how earlier I was talking about how hand traps were one of those things where you use from your hand, they went to the graveyard, they were gone. The thing is with the bestial monsters, you use them from your hand, you activate them as a hand trap, and they become a body on your side of the field. And then on top of that, they have further effects. Magnum Boot's gonna let you search your dragon. Druid Swarm, if it's sent to the graveyard, gets to send a card from your opponent's side of the field. I can't remember if it destroys your sense, but whatever. It removes a card from your opponent's side of the field, right? So the thing is, you guys can argue, oh, that's just power creep. Well, if we're gonna power creep to this, then is every hand trap in the future gonna be a body for you? Is every hand trap in the future going to be a hand trap plus a search, plus a send, plus a whatever it is, right? Like in the future of Yu-Gi-Oh, you, you can't be having that happen. Now let's go online so I can be showing you guys a little bit of the examples that I've been talking about. So now that we're here online, I want to give you guys a few examples and just talk about how the bestial monsters, as you guys can see on the screen here, are very prevalent in every level of play right now. The casual play, the locals, regionals play, the YCSs, the most competitive levels, as well as the most casual levels and everything in between. The bested monsters are very, very necessary. So this video is off of Trip's channel. This is Team Samurai's first place Blackwing deck profile. As you guys can see, he's maxing out on the bestial monsters. Now, if you go on Team Sam's channel, I think he did a Dark Magician one. All these profiles from his locals, you you're maxing out on the bestial monsters because you need to, to beat the tier limit matchup. I understand why you have to be maxing out on these, but again, moving forward, post the tier limit format, I understand they're necessary, but what I'm saying is, does that mean it's healthy? Because post tier limits format, these don't become, I guess, necessary anymore because there's no tier zero format, but they're still necessary in the sense of the fact that like, hey, I can still play these against any other rogue matchup, any other meta deck that's light or dark, you guys can play the bestial monsters, all right? So I just want to say that. So this here is just at a local level, right? Well, here's uh, the YC Yes, where I think Jesse and Asala, I can't remember, I think Jesse came first to Costa Rica and then Asala came eighth or something like that. But the point is here, you guys can see that you're playing a bunch of the bestial monsters. I know this is not the best quality video, but he's playing a ton of the bestial monsters and this is in tier limits. So they keep that in mind. So people are playing this to beat the tier limit matchup and then tier limits can just play it themselves, which is just insane. That's why I'm saying like, again, at any level of play, right? You have here the locals level here, you have the YCS, the highest level of play. You're going to be maxing out and you're going to be playing these bestial monsters. Monsters. Now, this is kind of all why I wanted to come down to because here is the brand new OCG ban list. The brand new OCG ban list, if you guys see here the newly restricted cards, that's pretty much limited here in the TCG. You can only use one per deck, right? You guys can see that they hit Fenrir, hit Unicorn, whatever it's a cost share format. They hit the tier limit monsters, but here they hit the bestial magnum moot. now this to me means that they've acknowledged that this card or the bestial cards in general can be a problem for the overall health of the game again please just keep in mind when i'm talking about these cards i'm talking about the entirety of Yu-Gi-Oh. i'm not talking about a singular format about a singular competitive scene i'm talking about the entirety of Yu-Gi-Oh, rogue decks tier two decks etc etc right even tier one decks right now like tier one decks can't really thrive because of these cards does this mean that konami is pretty much acknowledging that like hey the bestial monsters maybe a tad overtuned we might need to check them a little bit and hopefully something like this i'm gonna be honest with you in my opinion i think something like this should follow tier into the tcg but again this being on the brand new ban list for the ocg this being at one i know we can talk about a lot of other cards but specifically this being here is uh very important because 
I feel like this could follow to the TCG, which is just kind of insane, right? So again, the whole point is for the present right now, I understand that everyone is playing it and they need to be playing it for the tier limit matchup specifically. But again, does that mean it's healthy for the overall game, right? Does that mean when we get a ban list that hits the tier limit deck, let's say shuts down the tier limit deck, you know, Kikolo's ban, whatever, Havanis ban, whatever it is, right? Once we get that here in the TCG, should the Bestial monsters be hit as well? Should we check the Bestial monsters at the same time? Because tier limit's gonna go away. If the Bestials don't, these are still going to be very relevant. So that's just something I wanted to bring up. And again, with this new ban list, I think the OCG and Konami in general might be realizing like, hey, maybe the Bestials are a little bit much. So now that we see at pretty much every level of play, the Bestial monsters are super, super prevalent. We're going to talk about the future. And I know I kind of touched on the future a little bit earlier, but I want to talk about specifically the future now because with the brand new OCG ban list, this kind of proved to me that Konami recognizes the Bestial monsters were kind of a mistake in terms of what cards should look like in terms of hand traps. I don't think cards like these can be printed and I think here in the TCG we need to see some sort of limitation to the Bisted monsters because in a format where it's not ruled by tier 0, the thing is with the Bisteal monsters, as soon as the deck is a light or dark based deck, you're already at a disadvantage. You're pretty much saying to your opponent, please hit these cards, make it so that I can't combo, and then please give yourself a body on your side of the field which can now be used to help OTK me, right? Like that's what the card effectively does. And that's the thing is with the Bestial Monsters is in the future, I don't think it's very healthy, even after the tier limit format goes away. So let's just say that again, this is all talking about not the tier limits matchup. We're talking about post tier limits. Let's say that deck gets neutered here in the TCG. Let's say Kikolos get banned. We got Havanist to one, Sheeran to one, whatever. Let's say that deck is not playable. All right. Tier limits gone. Okay, now I want to play another deck, and now I want to play, like, let's say a rogue deck. Let's just say hero. Again, like, I, I play hero a lot. Let's say hero. But you can even argue other rogue decks, right? So decks like Dark World, which is just the most recent example, right? I want to play those decks, but I can't because the Bestial Monsters are still going to be relevant. Keep in mind, light and dark are the two most prevalent attributes in the game. Now, unless we're in a format where light monsters or dark monsters are just not playable whatsoever, then essentially the Bisted Monsters are always going to see play. And that's crazy to me, just the fact that no matter what what the situation is these cards are going to provide you with a body they're going to provide you either with a search or some sort of other effect and then on top of that they're going to be disrupting your opponent so the thing is like i don't know at the end of the day i just don't feel like it's a healthy thing for the game moving forward it's kind of one of those things where you know let's say in a few months from now or a couple let's say a year from now right you're playing a deck you want to play you know and the thing is i know you guys can't base the game i'm, I'm gonna say this now right you can't base the game based off casuals and based off like rogue decks because that's not how the game and ban lists and stuff are built they're built to play this metagame right like the metagame is very very important to konami and i understand it has to be right because if there's no metagame there's no Yu Gi Oh. like this game really lives a lot by its metagame by its competitive scene so the thing is don't get me wrong i completely understand that but in general collateral card like i don't want to say collateral hits but cards that hit the the game in a collateral way i don't know if that's i'm saying that right but basically cards that are making it so that you guys can't play rogue decks or not even rogue decks necessarily sometimes decks are like you know um good enough to be tier one or, or tier 1.5 let's say tier two right between tier two and tier one let's say there are decks that are good enough to be between tier two and tier one but automatically the best deals make it so that they're at a handicap at a disadvantage and that's really really tough so what am i saying basically all in all what i'm trying to say is that I think the Bisted Monsters need to get limited to a certain extent here in the TCG. Maybe not one each. Maybe we start off with Magnamood at one. Maybe we do one Magnamood, uh, one Druus Worm or something like that. I don't think semi-limiting them does anything. I mean, I guess semi-limiting them makes it so that there's less copies. That's maybe a viable option. But I feel like there needs to be some sort of hit on the Bisteel Monsters. And then again, I know these cards are printed in the OCG. So hopefully the OCG doesn't print more Bisteels. But um, by Bisteels, I mean not the Bisteel cards, but more cards essentially that are like Bisteel cards, right? Where the you know, they, they're hand trap, they're a body, they have other effects. I think that needs to not happen because I feel like that's like a weird level of power creep. That's a level of power creep where we shouldn't see happening because again, it makes it so that these other hand traps become un, uh, like not viable. They're not viable anymore. Why would I play DD Crow if I can just play Abyssin Monster in today's format, right? So that's the thing, right? So I think honestly, all in all, these cards are really, really powerful. I understand why they're so powerful, but I think moving forward, we can't really just keep doing this, right? So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I understand that these are very powerful cards before you guys come at me and you're like, oh, but Spanko, you know, what are you saying? You're saying we should just deal with tier elements. We should just let that go through and let that be free. No, I'm not saying that at all. I understand that it's a tier zero deck, but you guys have to keep in mind that I'm thinking about the entirety of the game, not just a singular format. That's the most important thing that you guys have to keep in mind. I'm talking about the entirety. I'm talking about moving forward. 
forward. I'm talking about post tier limit. I'm talking about everything, not specifically this format. All right. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I love to hear you guys' opinions and love to hear you guys' thoughts. This is how we expand our perspective on the game as a whole, as a community. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like the video and subscribe if you guys haven't already. We're on the way to 8,000 subscribers. Let's make it happen. I know I believe in every single one of you guys. Thank you all for being here. With that, Spanko, signing out. Peace.